expenses for uh, the other expenses, 2916. And we're not going to come out to be exactly uh, what we had over here on the expenses by vendor. Well, is it exact? It's not, right? It's pretty close. But the idea would be that it might not be exact for the same reason that the expense, that the income side was not exact. And that is that when we record things to the expenses, uh, we're not forced to, QuickBooks doesn't force us to add a vendor. For example, it's possible possibly for us to use even these bank feeds. And even if there's nothing in the vendor uh, that we, we can record the expense. You don't typically want to do that. You want to have an expense because using the expense form will give you the more details so that you can make subledger reports like this. So that's different. Like we saw with the income line items, it's different than the balance sheet accounts because on the balance sheet accounts over here, uh, with accounts receivable and accounts payable, QuickBooks does force us to record a customer with the accounts receivable, for example, therefore the subledger ties out basically automatically. Do, it doesn't do that with this report, so it's possible for us to mess up the subledger uh, report. But if you're using the proper forms, which is going to be typically the expense forms and the checks forms, bill forms, for example, and you're populating a vendor as you do the transaction every time, then this uh, the total here should tie out. If it doesn't tie out and you're doing something wrong, such as you're recording expense forms with no vendor through the bank feeds or something, then you can fix it going forward and it should start to work once you start doing that from systematically because remember the income statement accounts will close out to the balance sheet so that so that it will kind of be correct from one point going forward after you start doing it correctly. So this is another report as well that you, you could make a pie chart from uh, by exporting this to Excel, which we might do in a future presentation. It's probably not as important as the income line items, right? Those are the ones that people are most focused on where you can make nice charts with that are usually uh, people like to see, but the expense ones, you might break it out by who you paid as well. And then on this side, we've got the purchase by product. Let's go ahead and change the range. This is the detail report. Let's go from 010123, 123, tab, close up the hamburger. So now we've got the purchases that we made by product. Let's go to the one to the right too. This is the purchase by vendor detail. I'll close up the hamburger here, change the range, going from 010123, 123, tab. Now we have the purchases by vendor detail and the purchases by product slash service detail. Usually when we're thinking about purchases from the QuickBooks standpoint, we're thinking about purchases of items, usually the inventory items, although you could have purchases of the service items. So unlike with the expenses over here, when I look at the expenses by vendor summary, the expenses are usually the things that we can think of as often coming through the bank feeds. Oftentimes small businesses and many businesses will record the expenses with the bank feeds as they have done electronic transfers. And that means that when you pay it, it's kind of like a check form that you're going to be paying it with. And the other side's going to go to an expense such as utility expense or the telephone expense and so on and so forth. However, when we're thinking about the purchases, we're usually thinking about the purchases of an inventory item of some kind. So if I go to this first tab, for example, and I go into my transactions and I go into not my transactions, my sales, and then I go into my products and services, uh, these are the things that we're actually selling. So most of the time when we think about these things, most people think about when we sell the items inventory, as inventory or service items, with an invoice or a sales receipt. However, of course, when we purchase those items, we're purchasing them from vendors, but instead of recording the purchase directly to an account, we are, we're going to be purchasing them to an item. So that means when I purchase them, like with an expense form, for example, then now I'm making a purchase, but instead of going to an account down here, like telephone, I'm entering an item. So now I'm purchasing it with a vendor just like when I had a telephone expense, but now I'm purchasing, you know, an item. So when you're thinking about those inventory items, that's going to tie in more towards uh, this report, which might not be as useful.
if you don't have usually generally the inventory items. So here's the, the fountains, the pump, uh, the rock fountain, and so on, the sprinkler heads that were purchased, and so on here. And then over here, we've got a, a similar thing in terms of the purchases by vendor. So this was purchases by uh, product or service. So we're listing out the things that we purchased in terms of inventory items, not including like telephone expense and stuff, the things that we purchased that had an item related to it. And then this over here is going to be the purchase that, that we made by vendor. So now we made the vendor from Hicks Hardware. Here's the stuff. Here's the the detail of the items that we pur repurchased in the description. You can see rock fountain sprinklers and so on and so forth. Now the purchases when we make them might not be on an income statement item, but rather when we purchase them, we're dealing with the inventory, right? So that gets a little bit. So that's kind of giving us more detail about basically uh, the inventory items if we're tracking inventory on a perpetual inventory method.